everyone and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Dima and I'm a customer success manager from Florida. Today's webinar, Tech to Tech, Smart Admin Portal features Anshu, another customer success manager from Ottawa. During this hands-on webinar, you will learn the step-by-step -step process to activate your smart software, manage your sus subscription, provision your educators, and manage administrators. By completing this process, it will support your educators to get the most out of your smart hardware and software. We encourage you to participate. If you have any questions and ideas, drop those in the chat during the presentation, and we will integrate them into the flow or hold them to the end. Be sure to keep an eye on the chat. We will share a link to many resources from today's webinar. Also, we'll provide a link at the end to a brief survey that once completed gives you access to a PD certificate for learning with us today. Now, I'm gonna turn things over to Anshu so that we can take a deep dive into Smart Admin Portal. Awesome, thank you Dima, thanks for the great introduction and welcome everyone. Uh, I am Anshu as Dima mentioned and in today's webinar, here are some of the things that I'm gonna However, and I really hope once you walk out of the webinar, you are you have all your answers to your smart admin portal. What is it? Why do we need it? How do we do it? How do we get in there and all those? So here's my agenda. I'll talk you through the benefits of admin portal first. Like before we dig deeper into how to, let's check, let's talk about why to. So talk about some of those things and then how do you access your smart admin portal? What is smart admin portal? You also get that answer there. Um, activate your software. Then I'm gonna highlight some recent changes uh, that we have implemented. There are two things that I would call out as we uh, go. If you are already an existing admin of admin portal, you might uh, see a little slight difference. And uh, I'll talk about those uh, plus one more thing. I'll keep you to surprise there for now. Uh, then the main, main uh, topic of this webinar or main thing call to action for you guys would be managing your users or provisioning. That's the technical term that we call it internally, but it's essentially enabling your users' email addresses via the smart admin portal so that they have access to some advanced features. Some tips for managing users. There are some admin roles that you can manage for your admins of admin portal. And then of course, we'll share lots of resources. Dima is there in the chat and please make sure to keep, keep watching, keep an eye on the, uh, on the chat with some links or of course, post your questions there and we'll stay a few minutes later and before your Q&A there. So let's get started. Uh, starting with benefits of admin portal, of course. Uh, so admin portal is the backend portal. It's a URL-based online system, which is used to step number one, activate your software. So activate is only needed if you are a new customer, you have purchased the new uh, software, first time user. So I mean, not for the renewals, but the new fresh purchase of the software, you first time need to activate the software using admin portal. And I will cover a bit more details on how to do that. What is the procedure for that? Once you have activated the software, the second thing you need to do admin portal is to manage your users or provision your users or add your users in the admin portal via their email addresses uh, so that they have more access again. Then the admin portal also lets you manage your subscription. Manage means uh, you're able to see your upcoming renewal, how many seats you have purchased, how many users you have provisioned, so you have everything in one place that helps you keep an eye on, on your subscription, on, on the details, on the important details that you need to know about it. Now, once you have managed your users or added your users in the email addresses, the bottom three things in my screen, these are the benefits that come to the end users actually. So as an admin, you do the top three things and what this gives the, your end users is flexible software access. So by flexible software access, I mean two different things. One is they get access to a online component of the software that is also included in your subscription. It's a URL-based, URL again, web browser enabled. All you need is the web browser, but the teachers can sign in through that online software and have access to, your, uh, to their files flexible access anywhere, any device. They're not tied to the notebook software installation, the desktop software installation where you had previously installed the software, but they can access it anywhere. There's also an added benefit on the same notes on the notebook side. Again, notebook is our desktop software. 
uh, previously you might have enabled, you might have uh, uh, activated your desktop software via the license key, but if they use the same email address to sign into their notebook, the desktop version, they, they do not need the license key. So less work for you, no more license key management, just we'll let them uh, explain them. They can sign in even in the smart notebook software and this gives them flexibility. They can have notebook installed on as many computers they like, like my personal laptop, my person, my home computer. I'm not using an additional license key to be activated, but I'm using my email to sign in. So I'm 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 just having access on the multiple computers with my same email address as my license key. The next thing, the benefit that comes to the teachers, as I've been saying, is they get some more lesson delivery features. They are able to do some game-based and collaborative activities where students can join the lessons that are uh, on the that are that the teacher is posting on the online platform. Students can connect from their devices. They can interact. They can respond back. They can uh, collaborate and, and various different features that come up with that uh, online lesson delivery. Then there is syncing of files with Lumio and IQ. And uh, to explain this, I will go on to my next slide. Let me uh, go back to, it will cover a little bit of all these three, three things. But let me start with explaining you what is included in your software subscription. So today, if you purchase a smart hardware and a smart, smart software, these are all the things that uh, you get. Most of the people are familiar with the smart notebook, like I mentioned, this is our desktop version of the software. And if you have a big uh, subscription, then you get Notebook Plus. So it has features of some premium features, those game-based activities. But included with that is also the Lumio by Smart, which is the online version of the software that I was, I was mentioning. So this is our online component. If you have smart panels that come with the IQ appliance, so IQ is the inbuilt appliance with the, with the smart boards where you do not need to connect any computer, but it gives you access to a whiteboard and a web browser. You can sign into IQ. IQ lets you sign in. There's a sign in button in here on the board itself. Uh, and then again, you sign in with the same email address. That means you will have access to your Lumio files or your online files on the board. Again, no device connection needed just, just by teachers walking and they, they can see the files. And of course, these are our team management system. Smart admin portal is the back end to manage your software and smart remote management, which we're not gonna go uh, discuss today. But this is our hardware management system for you to manage your smart boards. Uh, push installers, push updates, restart, shutdown, troubleshoot, sitting in your office, you can connect uh, to your smart boards through that system. So this was, these are the three things that are included. And I'll just take one more minute to explain part of my benefits of, of signing in, benefits of using that email address to log in. So again, today, if you have not provisioned your users and you have this smart software subscription, all you are using is this part, smart notebook desktop application where teachers can create their lessons and present their lessons on the smart board. Of course, uh, a great tool, a great front of the class tool where teachers are, are using the board and the notebook. But if they sign in, even the notebook allows you to do some of those collaborative activities, like I mentioned, uh, the, the teachers, the students can connect to her lesson uh, on the notebook lesson and then participate in the activity. They can share their file on, onto, onto, uh, onto, they can save their file in the cloud. Basically, that will be used to sync it to the Lumio. So this is the benefit that comes in. Uh, any existing content that the teachers have created already in the notebook format, can be opened in Lumio, of course, they are compatible, but Lumio also lets you import any Google Slides, PDF, or PowerPoint form of the content if you have, and, and, and you, can do, uh, you can just, each slide will convert into one of the Lumio slides, and in, the, in uh, between you can add those interactive components that I have been saying. So if you have not provisioned, again, you are using this, but you're not using this, you're not using this, there is the syncing of files that happen from Notebook to Lumio. You're not using this. And briefly, I mentioned IQ before. So signing to IQ, 
open up, have access to your Lumio file, or if you create a brand new file on the IQ whiteboard, it will get synced to your Lumio uh, files, your Lumio library, basically. So this is the scenario you are in today. If you have not provisioned your users or not enabled them their email addresses, this is the one portion that you are using, but you're missing out on all of these. So those were some of the things. Uh, if there's anything, any questions that I can help clarify, let me know. Um, um, but I hope you get the essence of why we are we are promoting the users to use the email address to sign in and then use all those features there. Now let's get into our admin portal stuff. Accessing the admin portal. How do you access the admin portal? Um, and of course, Dima will put that link into the chat. So everybody can create their free account for the admin portal. If you have an account, you will sign in to your smart admin portal account. So this is this is the screen that comes up. You can sign in. Or if you do not have an account, then you will sign up for free. Of course, for the new users, there is uh, and it's very small, but uh, you can sign up here. Uh, and the option number three is actually you can if you are the purchaser, if you have purchased, you are one of those people who were listed as our contacts during the smart purchase, you'll, you'll receive a, a email purchase confirmation email from smart that would have a unique link. And I will again show you this one a little bit more in the detail. You click on the unique link that will take you to the admin portal and you'll follow either one or two options. So yes, you got this email, you click the link, but now either you have to sign in if you already have an account, but if not, you'll get a chance to create your account, set your password, and then this subscription will be tied to your account. I'll call one more thing uh, out here. If you sign up for free, so just stand alone, uh, right now you go ahead and sign up for free, even if you set your password and you are in the admin portal, you will not see anything. Right, you are not attached to any account. You're not attached to any subscription. This is just creating your free account. So you do need to be connected to an existing account. And how that would happen is either the person who received the purchase confirmation, who was the first person to get into the admin portal, that person will automatically be tied to a subscription. They can add you as an admin. They can invite you as an admin. So let's move on to the next slide. Uh, you have to be invited by an existing admin. Now, many times we hear that, oh my, I don't know who is the admin or there was a previous admin who has left. We have no access. Nobody knows who is there, what's the password and all that. In that case, you will need to reach out to our smart support team uh, with some or, or information that we can relate to, either your purchase order, your if you have your license fee from your previous uh, uh, order, something like that and then they will be able to provide you access. So recently, I am the customer success manager. We have the customer success team here. Dima is my fellow uh, member in the team. So if you are already working with a CSM or a customer success manager in your area, then you can also contact us or feel free to drop right now. You can, you can uh, drop us an email. Uh, we'll share our email addresses and one of us will be happy to uh, help you provide you access if you guys do not have an access there today or if you want to be basically connected to an existing account to manage your user's subscription. Okay, so next, activating the software. So this is, again, this is for going back to the people who are purchasing their uh, new software, brand new customers, then you will need to use the unique link in the purchase confirmation email. So here's just an example of a Lumio activity actually, also giving you some of the experience of the Lumio there. It's a label reveal activity but let's not go into Lumio side of the things. This is a sample email that you kind of receive. Uh, we are working on revising it, so slightly different, it's possible. But if you are listed as a contact, this email goes to the purchaser, there will be your subscription details. But most importantly, this is, uh, it looks like this. click on this unique link to claim your software or to activate your software and set the descriptions. And there's also a link to a video just to assist you with what are the next steps, what you need to do and, and, and all that kind of stuff. So this is a purchase email going to the purchaser, click on the unique link, activate your software. Once you click on the unique link, actually it takes you to the uh, smart admin portal. This is kind of a screen that you will link. It will mention how many subscriptions uh, or how many years of the subscription and how many seats. And then you'll be able to create your organization 
uh, in this drop down, or if you already have it, then you'll just select it from there and attach that subscription to this. So again, this person is the first person who is getting access to this admin portal, though we call it a super admin, and then later on, this person will be able to add or invite more admins to this admin portal uh, for further management. Sometimes it happens that, uh, I'll also call out a side note, sometimes it happens that this email is going to your, say, purchasing department or your uh, audit finance department. They are not technical people, but they are the one who signed uh, everything, so their contact information is available. In that case, if you know who has received this email, but they're not the technical folks, they're not going to be managing the software, you can ask them to forward it to yourself. It would work very well. Once they forward it, whoever clicks that unique link is basically is activating the software. They can do it. It's They're just, uh, just uh, activating the software and then hand it over to you to add the admins. Or again, get the copy of that email, click on that unique link, to get started with, with the subscription management there. Okay, so now at this time, somehow you should have access to that smart admin portal e either by unique email or by existing uh, admin invitation or by contacting one of us. Let's talk about how does the user interface looks like inside and what are the changes that I was talking about? How do you navigate in the admin portal? How do you do everything that we have uh, uh, mentioned about? So this is how it looks like. This is the user interface. I'm actually going to switch live to my smart admin portal, my test environment that I have. It just looks better here. So you'll, you'll be able to see yourself. You have signed in. These are the organizations. If you manage multiple organizations, you will be able to see those or otherwise uh, just one organization that you have in there. There are two tabs, software and organization on the left. So we'll say most of us, uh, most of the time under the software tab. This explains you your organization name. This is your subscription ID. That's what we call it, subscription ID attached to your account. Uh, here are two different kind of uh, subscriptions that I have, and I'm gonna speak a little bit on this Lumio Spark and Lumio Standard, but normally you will see just one line, Lumio Standard Plan, total number of seats, that you have purchased, your expiry date of this software license, and also four slash 30 means I have actually 30 seats, but I have only provisioned four users right now. So this is just an indication showing me the status of my subscription. My company name, my subscription ID. If you are going for renewal next year, say you have your upcoming renewal, then this is the subscription ID that you will need to communicate we are channel members, we are resellers, whoever you are working for, uh, working with to uh, process your renewal. You can just give them them subscription ID and say, okay, I need two more years of 100 seats or whatever. But this is a subscription ID that is needed now. Uh, we will talk about these, but let, let's go back here. So I have a quick screenshot on, again, what has changed. Our old interface was similar to this one, but before you were able to see your license key under your organization name. And what the new change is that you don't see any more license key, you only see the subscription ID. Please note that this is not the key that you will need to activate the smart the notebook software, again, the desktop stock software, if you are still using the license key method. Uh, the reason is, again, we want to encourage you, stay with the technology, stay with the latest updates, uh, latest, um, direction that we are moving, which is to add users, which is to sign in or use the software using the email addresses instead of license keys. Uh, so that's why you won't see the license key in the opening screen here, but you'll see a subscription ID, which is to just to communicate for your next renewals or, or with the support team if there are any issues. But this is the, basically, this is the change from license key to subscription ID, okay. So this one I've mentioned, if you do manage multiple organizations, so you will be able to see, let's say all organizations, then you'll be able to see the list of, this is my one smart technologies as one instance, and then Woodbine School as my other power. So this could be as I'm a district admin, but I need to manage multiple schools for the district, but each school is purchasing their own separately. Somehow I need to manage their own software. So those are some of those scenarios uh, that, 
that might need you to be or admin of multiple organizations. So multiple organization. Now I mentioned that you do not see the license key anymore in the opening interface, but if needed, worst case, we do have some edge cases, you know, some of the schools, they don't have uh, internet or some have restricted environment, which they need to use this license key, teachers cannot sign in, then all you will do is click on this uh, education smart software and it will pop up another screen, which uh, there's a there's a field that says generate your license key and you will be able to see there. So it is there, it's hidden. Again, the purpose is we want to encourage people to use the use the email address instead of the license key. That's why it's a little bit hidden. Um, and so this change just happened as of uh, November 2023. And we are moving, we are doing this slow transition. In some cases, this is one of those examples. If you do see, still see the license key, this will happen if you had the multiple license keys before, like you had purchased one and you had purchased a new one six months later, so different expiry dates or something. So these will all be handled, but we are doing this in the phases. So just wanted to call it out. If you still see these, if you're an existing admin of the, of the previous license key, previous software, then you might still see it, but it will go away very soon, or at least definitely at your renewal time. The, the team is working on or working on addressing the uh, immediate renewals first, and then as your renewal date comes in closer, then they will be merged into a single subscription key, so you, it's a subscription ID, so you don't need to manage the individual keys separately um, every six months, every three months, or whatever different quantities. It will be all consolidated into a single subscription. Okay, now I mentioned this is our next announcement, I can say, or next change that has recently occurred. It actually just released in January 2024. We have re released a new tier of Lumio that is called Lumio Spark. So Lumio Spark is another, uh, you can say, a higher tier of the Lumio standard. Lumio standard is what everybody has access to so far that uh, people were used to purchasing their uh, software subscription. But now there's an added subscription for Lumio Spark. Uh, there might be some information that Dima will put in the chat on uh, Lumio Spark. We do have uh, uh, webinars, monthly webinars on also uh, what is Lumio Spark, what are the features. So it's just giving you some additional features that include maintaining an organization library of the lessons or shared libraries of the lessons. So schools can basically, uh, they can standardize their curriculum. This is the grade four curriculum that I want all the grade four teachers to be used for English or math or whatever. So they can create their lessons, have them in an organization library and the teachers can access those to have a uh, standard uh, format of the lessons or content of the lessons there. So if you do have Lumio Spark, then both of your subscriptions will show up under your, um, under your organization name. There might be a different piece, right? If you have 100 teachers, everybody's on the Lumio standard plan, but then there is this group of teachers who are, or my curriculum folks or ed tech coaches who are responsible for creating this content in the, uh, the shared libraries or, or libraries. You do not, you can just buy say 10 seats for those group of folks and then they will appear here. And so two different layers or two different tiers of the software are available as of January 24. Please visit our website or, or the links that uh, the will share to learn more about Lumio Spark plan. Okay, and now this is, I would say, most important or the call to action to you guys. What do you need to do once you have access to your uh, admin portal? How do you manage the user? So let's see the process here. So as we have seen so far, I'll go back to my screen just to make it more visible. We had seen everything else, but we did not talk about this manage users button. So manage users button against each of the plans will let me add the teacher's email addresses or enable the teacher's email addresses that I want against each plan. Now, let's go one more detail about this one. So there are two options for you, manage the users or sync your users. You can manually add the users, of course, but we also support automatic syncing. Automatic syncing with your class link or your Google folders, Google groups, basically, that you have created for the teachers if you are a Google district, or if you are a Microsoft district, then you might have Microsoft as your folders or a directory created where you have all the teachers' email addresses or all the teachers' accounts. Going a little bit further down. So within manual, there are two options. You can, of course, type in email address. Works fine if you have five seats, 10 seats, or less than 20, I would say. 
or you can import a CSV file. CSV is, you can, uh, just a single column, one row per user, all I need is the email addresses, so all the email addresses in, into a single column, and that's it. You import it and your teachers are in your admin folder. The recommended way for more than 20 seats or, or a bigger school district is auto-provisioning. Auto like I mentioned, we support all of these three platforms. Uh, Sync will be, uh, sorry, Sync with the supported tool that you already use. If you have maybe started, uh, like I want to test it out or I just want to try it out, you had manually added five people, for example, and then okay, you're set to go, okay, let's do the Google Sync now. Please remember that it will replace any existing users. And once the sync is set up, it's basically bringing in all the users from your sync to the admin portal. The sync happens once a day or once a night, I would say uh, every night. So you do not need to maintain your users in the two systems, right? If you have a Google group created with all your teachers, new people are coming in or somebody leaves the school, the, uh, if you maintain your Google group properly, then uh, all those changes will communicate to admin portal. So you don't need to worry about that part. Uh, manual option will be disabled. So basically you are allowed to use only one option, either, either the manual or, or the automatic. Now, if this, uh, this is just my screenshot on what happens once you click that manage user button, these are the five options that we have uh, seen. Again, I like to show you in the real uh, screen there. As soon as I click that manage users, for your case, it might be zero. There might be no one. I do have four users enabled, so I see the list of four. I'll click on add users if I do, if I want to add more. I know that I have only four added out of 30. So I can continue typing the email addresses. That's all I need. I can uh, do that CSV, import a CSV. It would ask you the file for your CSV or one of those. I will also click on Google just to show you how it looks like. So all you need to do, there are two options with the Google and same with the Microsoft. Either you can use your domain, full domain. So for myself, uh, I know our domain is smartech.com. All I need is smartech.com in here. Or I could do my Google group email address. So I have a Google group of my teachers. I can uh, sync it with that Google group. So I'll call out two things here. One we support nested folders, nested groups, basically. So if you have different groups of elementary, secondary, high school, or whatever, different school names, whatever, the groups of different school names, you could create a master group, call it smart users, Lumio users, whatnot, and have all of your uh, subgroups as your nested group and sync with your master group. It will be fully supported. So this way you're, you are also managing, you know, my teachers are changing in this group or whatnot. So that's one thing. The second thing that I'll call out, this is not documented anywhere, is if you happen to have uh, 100 seats, say, say you purchase 100 seats of your uh, smart software, and you, your Google group, and this will apply to the domain too, right, has more users than that, then you have seats purchased. So you have 200 teachers in the school, but right now this year you purchase 100 seats. If you sync with your Google group, of course, all your 200 teachers will come into admin portal. Everybody will have access to the software. It's not first come first serve, it's not the top 100 or something. Whoever is an admin portal, they will have access to the software. Now, Smart lets you do that. Smart lets you do that for a period of time, right? So again, this is going back. You have 100 seats, you have 200 users, you don't need to pick and choose which teachers do I enable, how do I know who, who needs it or who will use it or who will like it. That is the reasoning behind it. Keep it simple for the IT folks, for admins. We let you do the whole batch, bring in everyone, and then at the time of renewal, or again, the CSMs have access to this information and some other licensing team has access to this information for a period of six months to one year, we'll be reviewing, right? And you can yourself also have a look at this information. Once everyone is entered, whoever signs into this uh, software, they will have these fields populated. Whoever does not sign in, they will not have it populated. So yes, you have bought 200, but at the renewal time, we're able to assess uh, how many people are actually using it. Is it only 100, 110, or is it all the 200? If it is 200, then it gives you an idea it lets you make your decision of your next renewal seat. 
Uh, but if still after the one year, only 100 are using it, but you have 200 uh, enabled, no problem, continue to use your Google Sync as it is, and then uh, re renew it for your 100 seats. So, so it's it's kind of visibility to yourself. We are actually coming soon. There will be a new tab in the admin portal to have much deeper, uh, much deeper, what do you say, visibility on the usage. Who, who are your power users? How many are using it? How many used it three months before? All that information, basically, usage of the smart software coming to to the admins of the admin portal that you can see. But for now, this this will be our only field. Uh, once you can sort them by this field, you can filter them by the field and identify how many people are actually using it. So do not worry. Open it. You can open it up on the domain level. Domain level, the only thing is uh, it will also include your admin stuff or other people. But if you have a group of Google group or Microsoft group of all the teachers, that is essential. Bring in all of your teachers and there should be no harm, no, no issues. We won't go back. Okay, last year, more people were using it. So you owe us, so nothing like that. So these were your options. And it, it takes like, you can see if you have a Google group uh, created, take you less than five minutes to do all of this. It will need the admin password. You have to be the Google admin or you will have to have those admin credentials to start this automatic syncing. So make sure you have that access there. And then similar lines on the Lumio Spark, like I mentioned. So you might have a Lumio standard plan for all of your school district, but if you have a few group of teachers that you want to provide further access to Lumio Spark plan, then make sure you will go in here, manage users again, to provide access to those. In my case, I have 10 seats of Spark, so provide access to these 10 users for Lumio Spark. Now, in this case, maybe you will not need the the automatic syncing because if it's a limited number of 10 people, you could use email addresses or the uh, CSV file if you did these. That's in, but, but do not forget to uh, add your users for Spark permissions. And not only you can add the Spark users, actually there's one more thing that comes with Spark is, like I mentioned, it's an organization library. It also comes with free roles for those users who are in the Spark, uh, Spark subscription. They could be library admin, of course, they'll have full access, or they could be just the editors of the files, or there could be viewers of the files. So once you enter, once you added the people for your Spark subscription, you can go individually, click on library roles. What role do you want to provide to this person? And then select one of these three or all of them. You can also, of course, remove any user and provide access to somebody else if needed be. But uh, this, this is something added functionality that we have just released uh, this month, actually. So that was our main essence. And now it's just some quick tips for managing the users. Uh, I think I've called it out. Choose only one method. You cannot do sort of manual and automatic or, or vice versa. So there's only one syncing method allowed. Uh, from our experience, we have seen Google is the most popular way. That's why I keep calling Google an example. But make sure your list is updated regularly on the, on your Google side, not in here. So this will sync uh, every day, but uh, make sure you maintain your users on the Google level or your Microsoft level so that uh, your seats are updated in here. Now, once the users are added, provided, uh, added into the admin portal, so basically they are, we are providing them these new features, this Lumio access now they have. So we try to help them by sending some communication. They will receive onboarding communication from Smart. It's one email a week for five, five weeks. So it's a bite-sized information. It's like, uh, this is how you start with your first file. This is how you add a video or share the file with the student, that kind of information. So our request to our admins, to you guys is, please uh, make sure that this domain and Dima will enter that too. Yes.smartech.com uh, is whitelisted in your environment and also spread some awareness that you may receive some email or not may. You will receive some emails from customer success at uh, gs.smartech.com. These are helpful resources. There's no phishing, there's no marketing, there's no sales material in there. These are just direct links to this is how you do something, a uh, kind of that communication. And there is an unsubscribe link, of course, if they do not want to. All right, I think this is my last section calling out on the admin roles. So I showed you the previous roles, those were for the end users and all that. And everything we were doing was in the software tab. 
Now moving on to the organization tab. Organization tab is used to manage the admins of admin portal. So not the end users has nothing to do with your users, but these are the list of people where uh, who will have access to, to the admin portal. So under organization, go to administration tab. And if you need to invite another fellow admin, another technical person who needs to help you with managing everything that we just saw, you can invite. All you need is the email address and, of course, the name. You'll attach them to the organization. So if you are doing multiple organizations, for example, you will be, you'll be seeing the two or three. And if you just want them to assign to one school, then you can add them to this school. Uh, and there are three roles again for the admins also. One is the admin. Of course, admin has uh, admin can manage your software and manage your organization. The tech instructor can manage the software, but can only view the organizations. Means he cannot invite more admins. He cannot remove an admin. He can only manage the user side of the software. And the supervisor has view only permission. So this might be more higher stakeholders. They just want to have visibility, visibility and access, but not necessarily managing anything inside. So three different roles that you can uh, invite your additional admins uh, that they can come in and help you out, I guess. Um, just like you can uh, invite, uh, I think in my previous screenshot, I can show you here, if I go under uh, administration, I can select one and I can remove this user. So if you log in today and you see this person is no more, no more with your organization, you can go ahead and remove this person or or invite more folks. And uh, so these are my existing organizations and these are the roles of the person. Okay, like I said, that was my uh, last section, but I will call out one resource here, our support website. So this will be whatever, I know I went through a lot of information, but uh, if you click on this, uh, all the resources, it is open here. This is our support website. Everything that I talked about is listed in here. So make sure you, you refer this. What is Smart Admin Portal provisioning your users if you have to add them? Manual. If you have to do the Google, so there are further uh, further instructions that that come up. So very useful, very helpful website with step by step on everything. And then don't forget to go to training and videos section where you will also see some of these uh, uh, some of these small bite sized videos that if you if you if you like to not read and watch the videos, you you can uh, go there. And then one more thing I'll call out here is. I will answer your some of the questions. Please visit this uh, FAQ. Frequently asked questions section on the same support page, and um, uh, I'm sure you might have some of those questions in the mind. Um, that will that will help you there. So very useful, very good resource. Uh, Dima will put that in the chat, but uh, please make sure to visit this support page. You don't have to remember anything that I told you, although it, it was pretty simple. Uh, I believe, and and uh, it, it should help you out there. If you have any questions, reach out to our customer success team or our support team. Again, we will be sharing those links in there, but that's about it. Um, some more, but I would appreciate a couple minutes of your time. First, feel free to pop in any questions. Let me, um, I'll, I'll have a look at the questions there, but I'll appreciate if you take a minute to fill up this survey. Uh, feedback. We love feedback. Feedback is a gift and it helps me to uh, improve my content or uh, answer any further questions. If, if you have any questions again that uh, you want to bring it later forward, you can also put that on the survey and we will contact you uh, with your all the answers. Yeah.